Hey everybody, you're listening to If Walls Could Talk, a podcast brought to you by HuffCore. So with me today is Jen Rogers from HuffCore, who is our Director of Projects on the West Coast. And she and I are going to be speaking about some of the things around education design. Uh, Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Um, So nowadays, there's a lot of research on how schools should be built. Um, There's an abundance of documents out there on child development um, from a psychological standpoint, behavioral standpoint of just how children learn, uh, which is a direct reflection of their classroom environment. Uh, So, therefore, having an environment that offers flexibility, daylighting, you know, sunlight coming into the windows, right? Um, All those attributes, furniture that the kids sit in, uh, collaboration in between classroom spaces, all of that aids in the students' overall learning. And it's just really important in today's classroom environment and the overall uh, campus remodels that we're seeing. Uh, so it's kind of the new normal of how we're doing school design and operable walls and glass wall systems that move and open up a space are just playing more of an integral part of this whole new design development of classrooms. So, yeah, that's what we're going to discuss today in a little bit more in depth. So the multi-purpose room um, has many functions, whether it's school plays or presentations on the stage, um, maybe it's you know, it's a cafeteria where they serve meals. They have community meetings, after-school meetings. It acts as a community center, sometimes as an extra PE class on rainy days. The multi-purpose room is really the heart of the school. Uh, it, it completely is, yeah, for sure. I mean, when I was growing up, you know, you'd have PE classes on a rainy day in the multi-purpose room. You'd eat lunch in the multi-purpose room. Uh, community people would come in the evenings, parent meetings, and gather so, yeah, the classroom environment now, hence multi-purpose room, has many different functions. So, I happen to be at LearningScape, which is a uh, trade show that happens once a year across the United States. It was in Colorado a couple weeks ago, and I sat in on many of the different courses, which obviously spawned around classroom uh, design. And one particular course I took was on how the old cafeteria design is totally outdated and how now the new cafeteria, hence multi-purpose room design, is kind of elevated. Point being is that kids back in the day used to be crammed into cafeterias, right? Cafeterias were small. You sit down at a table. You know, there's benches on each side of the table. You gobble down your food, and then you're stuck there for 45 minutes, right? So, uh, for instance, the boys, you know, boys, uh, young gentlemen then in middle school, their brains aren't developed all the way, right? I mean, people know nowadays that brains aren't fully developed until, you know, 2025. So you get these boys, they gobble down the food, they get wiggly. Um, You know, if they start getting up, they start horse playing in the cafeteria, there's nowhere for them to expel this energy. And, you know, they might start fights with their best friends. And the teacher will go over and say, gosh, you know, Billy, why did you punch John? And Billy would say, I don't know. It just happened. And literally it's the psychological attributes of a young man's mind that plays into the school design. And this, again, goes back to the research of these teachers and professors and doctors that say, gosh, you know, if we open up the space, if we make the cafeterias larger, if maybe there's traditional tables for kids to eat at, but then over here in the corner, there's soft seating. Uh, There's maybe an operable wall that might close off that soft seating area so that the introverts can go in and eat their lunch and read a book and have some peace and quiet. Uh, And this also helps aid in the fact that the students aren't going back after lunch, you know, to their fourth, fifth, and sixth period classes all spazzed out, right? They've got more room to decompress and decompressing at lunchtime or being able to go out on the playground and stretch your legs or play soccer for the young boys is really important. So there's this course that I took at LearningScape was really fascinating on how the small space in this traditional multi-purpose room design now has elevated. Um, and glass walls are playing a huge role in that new design for those spaces. I think, um, I don't know if um, 
you were originally from California, and maybe it's because I'm in the Midwest, but I remember when I was a kid, elementary school, middle school, even, like, mostly high school, probably the most, like, daylighting I ever saw in any of the schools I went to was, like, in, like, a hallway, which, was, you know, was great. It was, it, was a great, it was a great trip from, you know, this classroom to, to gym at the other end of the um, – the other end of the building or whatever, but we never had much in terms of, you know, daylighting. And I just remember, I don't know, fluorescent memories, right? Like, you know, small space, exactly. brick walls, um, not very conducive to learning. So, so let's take a look at the new multi-purpose design and how this space has changed or is changing the experience. Yeah, so just like I mentioned a minute ago, um, but just to elaborate a little bit more, the multi-purpose rooms, you know, the design now have various niches of space. So, again, you might have a small soft seating area. You might have an area with downtime that, again, might be closed off by an operable wall. Um, and then being able to open up, you know, for that next period of kids coming in after cafeteria time where it might be used as a classroom. Um so, and adjacent to that, you might have a corner area, uh, you know, where kids might be doing a study group. So, now it's all these different functions that the multi-purpose room is having within the same hour, you know, with, a, with mm -hmm. you know, 200 kids. Um, so, having that flexibility of walls and an operable wall, you know, really plays into allowing that multi-purpose building to have a combination of rooms, smaller rooms, larger rooms, and the teachers or facilities managers can just quickly throw that wall in place, mm -hmm. and it's adaptable to a whole new function, right, which is what we want schools now to offer as new functionality within the same space, you know, multiple times a day. Um, and that can also create more of a dynamic space and reinforces stronger social engagement for the group of students. Um, and these types of, of environments within the cafeteria space no longer operate solely, like, for a place to feed kids, but, you know, becomes more of an emphasis of social, positive um, engagement for kids where they're allowed to do different kinds of activities, health, wellness, nutrition, you name it, all in the same space. So the multipurpose room is more of a dynamic part mm -hmm. of the campus that we're seeing. And it's important, yeah. too, I, I would guess that um, it's great that you can clean your space, but it's also equally important that you can do it quickly, so that's important, too. So it's not like, a yeah. well, we're going to set up the space for something tomorrow, but if that something was next period and only next period and it was the middle of the day, it would be easy to set it up and put it back or whatever. Um, so where else are operable walls used in multipurpose room design? Yeah, so as well, like a lot of times the multi-purpose rooms will have a stage, you know, where there's performing arts, the kids are doing a Christmas play or, you know, chorus, whatever. Um, so most of the time, depending on, you know, if it's middle school and high school, the multi-purpose rooms usually are going to have a stage. Um, and sometimes we've had designs, too, where uh, the multi-purpose room stage, right, is going to have a specification for an operable wall on that stage. And so the operable walls offer, obviously, uh, the openings of the stage for itself. And sometimes on the back of that stage, you might have a classroom where there might be the band, okay, the music band. So you might have a side A stage and a side B stage. And, again, that operable wall is going to allow you that division of space within the stage itself and maybe allow you two different activities at the same time. So that's where we see operable walls used as well as on the stage. So you mentioned like an example of a band room being on the back side of that stage. So I imagine the sound must be very loud with all those instruments. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All those drummers, <laughs> trumpets playing. Uh, yeah, no, it, it totally is loud. So luckily we can assist and help minimize the sound, uh, which is called STC levels, your sound transmission class level. So anytime you're working with an operable wall or glass wall system, there's going to be some kind, kind of acoustic property rating, a value that comes along with that wall. So the fact that our typical acoustic operable walls can go up to an STC of 56, a uh, typical drywall is a 45. Um, okay. So that right there is allowing 
you know, that sound to be muffled from room to room if you're going with that higher SDC level. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask that what the typical one is. And we'll, we'll talk about that more um, in another episode, but that's good to know. Can you say that one more time with STC, a typical, a typical drywall A typical wall is- drywall is 45, you know, in your commercial office building or school, um, your house okay. even. It's going to be at about a mid-40 range. Okay. Yeah. So room no. to room. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and, again, speaking of this, this space that we're discussing with a this, with this stage um, partition that breaks up the stage from a classroom or something else, are there various wall styles that are used on stages in particular? Yeah, I know that's a great question. So there are different kinds of operable walls. Uh, your typical operable wall is going to be, at our company at Hefcor, we offer a 600 series manual horizontal wall. So basically you have an operable wall. The track is top hung. Okay, so the track is on the top, not on the floor. And the panels are going to just glide down that track and open up left to right, okay, on the stage or in your multi-purpose room. Um, and that being said, there are carriers, which are the wheels on the top of each panel that just glide down the track. So it's really easy, for instance, if you have an operable wall on a stage, uh, you know, basically in a nutshell for that facilities manager to open up the system manually and just glide the panels down and stack them into the stacking space. And now the stage is wide open. Uh, we also carry electric motorized versions. Um, and then we also have a secondary electric option, which is called our vertical summit. And that literally is exactly what it sounds like. It goes vertically up into your ceiling cavity. Again, it would be motorized, but it just rolls up kind of typical to like your your garage door in your house, if you can imagine that. Uh, The panels stack up into your ceiling space. So there are a few different options outside of the traditional horizontal system. Yeah. Lots of options out there. When you talk about, um, I'm going off the rails now. Yeah. When you when you talk about gotcha. um, like manual, um, I guess are there are some different manufacturers. We don't need to get into the names, but are the different manufacturers easier than others? Because a lot of times when you think of like electric versus manual, and I think of like the the window crank back in the while well, I was barely alive, probably before you had like electric power windows and doors. Um, you know, does manual necessarily mean that it's more difficult or it's challenging, or is it just as easy? Uh, yeah, no, good question. Manuals, the first time you open up a manual wall can be kind of intimidating, right? Again, you're going to take a panel, your hands are going to go on each side of it, and you're going to grab this panel that's about three feet wide, 10 feet high or, you know, whatever size you've got, and you're going to walk it down the track. And you're thinking, oh, my gosh, is this thing going to fall on me? It's super heavy. It's going to, you know, fall off the track. By all means, it doesn't. You literally just grab the panel on each side of the frame, and you start walking with it. It's kind of like dancing. And, again, it just kind of glides down the track. Super easy. Um, So once you open up an operable system that's manual, you learn how to do it fairly quickly. Um, there are other manufacturers out there, some of our competitors that have some nuances with their systems, um, that make it a little bit more challenging than ours. Um, but yeah, I mean, that could be a different side conversation and get more technical. So ours is, ours is fairly easy for sure. It's like riding a bike. Once you figure out how to do it, you'll know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, Well, not to add to that, but I've, um, but yeah, I guess to add to that, sorry. I've uh, I remember the first time <laughs> that I that I moved one or you know put one in place and you you think that like you're gonna break something or whatever but really it's I think because they're so sturdy and rigid that mm-hmm. again it's kind of after you do it you realize oh this is yeah this thing is and it's not heavy because it glides along the track real easily and uh, you're like wow it's yeah it is it moves very easily and it's extremely strong and durable, so you're not going to break it. Exactly, right. So with our operable systems, which, you know, are the solid four-inch panels, you know, it's got vinyl on it or pretty fabric, whatever you choose, uh, there's a top seal and a 
bottom seal. So basically there's like a, a uh, how to describe it. There's, uh, imagine like a two by four falling to the floor, okay, out of a frame, right? There's like a little rectangular shoe that falls to the floor and now there's pressure right. on the floor. Okay, that's the best way I can describe it without showing a visual. Okay. And so when you move the panel, that little shoe gets to point on the ground and now that panel is in place. So it's pretty simple. On a glass system, um, we have a few different options as far as different series and models, but a few of our glass systems don't have that shoe that drops down to the floor. We've got little uh, pin drops, okay? So there's like a little metal pin that sticks out of the frame and there's a little hole in your floor that that little pin drops into. Super easy, okay? Easiest way to describe it. So yeah, the panels themselves are very easy, very user-friendly. A student can open up the walls if they wanted to. Cool thing about Huffcore is we've been in business 120 years. We design everything in-house. We engineer everything in-house. And our systems are designed like a tank, literally. <laughs> they look nice. Yep. They look very sleek and aesthetic. Um, but they are built with the highest integrity. So there are other systems out there that are flimsier, that are wobbly. You know, the frames bend a little bit. And they're not well made. Um, you don't want to put those in your schools. You want the highest level of integrity, the best well-designed system where it's going to get beat up by kids all day, right? It literally is. And that's what Huffcore stands for.